This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, which I don't know if it comes off. It probably does it in the in the podcast a- edits, but it feels so echoey in here now that we cleaned up and, and kind of tore down like the green screen and everything like that. I think I'm going to have to leave it up because I think we need it for buffer in this room uh, as we're discovering here. Uh, but anyways, with me, first of all, from Studio C, in the Big D of Dormont, PA. He is a gadget guru, a big bank international <gasps> esquire. It is John Chuchilla. How's it going? Hey, boss. How you doing? Not bad. I'm just back from vacation full of COVID. There you go. I got a soundboard. If this works for the show, I'm going to talk about it later. Also with us on <laughs> studio couch is the daughters. Hi, friends. Katie's back with us from... Florida. Yeah. From the tippy tip of Florida, the inside under tip of Florida. Yeah. We will not go further with that like <laughs> our text messages were. Yeah. Marco Island was infinitely better than wherever Chilla went for his vacation. <laughs> well, yeah. oh, mine was Ocean City. So. Oh, okay. I thought you said COVID. <laughs> no, I did. I, I brought back COVID. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that, that, that was got. his parting gift. I got you. That was <laughs> the booby prize. Um, no, you, Katie, you're, you're doing like a tour of like, like lower Florida here. <laughs> Because you're doing the Marco, you did Marco Island last week, and then we're, we're slated to go to uh, Key Largo, is it? Yes. Which is like right at the top of the keys, at I the guess. The tip of the keys. The tip of the keys. <laughs> so, like from the Kokomo? I, <laughs> is it? I don't know. Wait. I don't know. The song called it like Key Largo, Montego. Oh, I didn't know. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't think I've ever been in any place from a Beach Boy song yet. <laughs> you've you've is, never seen the movie Cocktail? Ah. Uh, Maybe you, uh, do I need to? Wait, is this an assignment before we go on this trip? I guess. Yeah, yes, I think it should it be. Okay. All right, Katie. Can we go with you, Katie? Can you, will you watch it with me? We'll, we'll, we'll uh, only this is if research. If, only if you will um, toss liquor bottles back and forth with me. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell Missy. Uh, this is the <laughs> awesome cast where uh, we talk about geeky things that we like to get started with our. Thing of the week. Thank you, Kid Metal. I for these um, sounders that I have not been using for months, and finally I figured out. I'm like, oh, I should connect this. Oh, I can connect this. This. You know, you like sit on something, and then like uh, eventually you just all the pieces just fit together in your head, and you're like, that's the thing. That was me at like 3 a.m. last night. Anyway, that's <laughs> usually when that happens, right? Um, anyways, let's get into our awesome things of the week. While I check some other things, and as I get to the right tab here, uh, Chilla, let's get started with you in case Katie needs a little bit more time. Oh, no, I'm in there. What's that? I'm in there. You're good to go? Okay. Chilla, what you got? Um, I actually put, in, and I'll do an interruption. So as you noticed, or as probably no one else noticed, my headset completely bummed out, and I have a pair of Zone Vibe Wireless from Logitech. Okay. Um, you can tell me how it sounds, because this is the first time I can I'm tell using you, it for more than just a sound test. I can tell you it um, sounds wireless. Sounds Well, I'm fine with that. Um, <clears throat> but my actual awesome thing of the week is Marvel Rivals was announced today. GamesCon started, um, and Marvel Rivals is slated for launch December 6th. I'm hoping we'll also get an update of when the Nintendo Switch um, bring back of a lot of the old Marvel versus Capcom X-Men Children of the Atom come back. But this is the first announcement that I've seen with an actual date. Um, and this will bring gameplay much like if you've played Overwatch. Um, same kind of theory. Um, but <clears throat> it will be completely free. All players will be unlocked from the start. Um, And you will be able to play as your favorite Marvel hero or villain. Um, I'm super excited for this. In the updated trailer today, they they showed more gameplay with 
both uh, who did they show Captain America and so it's like a uh, Winter Soldier here Winter Soldier mm-hmm. so I've seen some gameplay with Spider-Man looked really good Iron Man looked really good Loki looked good mm-hmm. um, Doctor Strange looked good so looks like it's going to be a pretty good game I think it's going to be a 6v6 type game and looking on, looking forward to it especially because it'll be free mm-hmm. um, and it'll be available on all the modern consoles um, modern PlayStation, any of the new Xboxes, uh, Steam, and Epic Games Store um, for PC. <clears throat> I'm interested to see what they do because um, I just started meddling with the Epic Game Store for Android because mm. you can now play Fortnite again on Android. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that goes from what I was reading. I loaded it on a modern device, um, but someone in one of the notes that I read said it goes all the way back to Android 8. I'm not sure I would want to play Fortnite on that old of a device, but hey, maybe. Um, <clears throat> so super excited for that as well because um, it'll be available on a lot of different platforms um, and it, because it's epic and whatnot. It should be cross-platform, so mm-hmm. your your profile should sync no matter what you're playing So, on. So you said it's free to play, but everything's all the characters are unlocked at the beginning. Do we know what the freemium parts of this are? Is it just going to be costumes and, and add-ons and things like that, kind of like Fortnite? Or, uh... That's my guess. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll probably have some kind of store. I will say if you've been playing the new Fortnite season that launched, I think, on Friday, they also brought forward... They brought back a lot of the Marvel stuff. Um, some pretty cool stuff there. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, as well as, like I said, the, the update for the switch games will be coming out here. Hopefully soon they haven't launched an announced date, but our launch date, but it'll be by end of year. Awesome. Looking, looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really loving games like this. Um, it, it reminds me a little bit of that. Um, oh, what was that? That battle suit, you know, with the, with the, the animals from Apple arcade <laughs> i've been playing and it you know it, it's actually crazy when i'm in, in the mood for something that's like an online multiplayer if i'm upstairs on the apple tv i'm playing that game if i'm downstairs on the xbox i'm playing call of duty that's right by the way call of duty plays really good on an original xbox one i discovered last week so so props to them for keeping that relevant like load times were not terrible i was probably uh holding everybody back but you know there's that all right uh katie have you figured out your awesome thing of the week uh yeah it started with an unawesome thing of the week. Well, my week, yeah, last week. I was on a flight supposed to be to Fort Myers, uh, Florida, that was <laughs> delayed, delayed, delayed because of a storm in Oklahoma City before I left the house. It was supposed to leave at 1140 or something like that. And before I left the house, it was already delayed multiple times. Uh, by the end of the day, or by the end of like when we actually took off, it was 15 plus delays and it was three o'clock. Uh, before we left the ground you had a hell of a time well thankfully i don't know if you knew this because this is the first time i've interacted it mm-hmm. but the pittsburgh airport has some uh, therapy dogs <gasps> Look at yes those guys. yes so i met sophia sophia is uh the little one in the middle um but this is zion um sophia and then long boy murph which i love on instagram <laughs> um so they were just walking around uh the airport and i was probably sitting there with a look on my face i'm just like i'm so tired because i went to the airport anyways because you know sometimes they're like look we found a magical plane and you're not here that's too bad yeah yeah that's <laughs> always scares me that's why i was like i'm still going on time but yeah so they have therapy dogs and the doggies also have their own cards like trading cards if you interact, you know, I didn't, uh, they were definitely interacting with some kids, got some hugs and they pulled out trading cards, but they're not always at the air. They're here and there at the airport. So mm-hmm. I don't, they're just showing up at certain times and they will let you know if they're going to be at the airport, but uh, definitely keep a lookout. And they are, they are very much pet me, love me, hug me, <laughs> <laughs> make this trip much be better for me. Doggos. Love it. I love oh, it. Sweethearts. Absolute sweethearts. I love it. I think I, well, you know, you've traveled with me you know i like to go pretty early <laughs> so i think we always miss them at least in pittsburgh i don't I, I don't usually do late flights out of pittsburgh unfortunately um but no yeah i saw your picture of that i was mm. like and, and i knew you know because we were sharing flighty to, to see what was going on and um and 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 i was like i was so glad that they found you and then you, i sent you the, it was a tweet or a thread or something from a, a tsa pre-check 
Yeah. Which was like considering whether they should give away free puppies when you sign up for pre-check. And I was like, Katie, I think these are your people from the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, also great that TSA pre-check has a, uh, that the TSA has a sense of humor on social media because <laughs> they need it. Oh my gosh. Like I couldn't believe how much longer the pre-check line was than the regular line. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, no. Even there, that's They're doing their job too well. Yeah. And then they, they only have the uh, pre-check open on the one side and not the far across the way terminal um on the was it i flew out what day did i fly well i know i think it was last monday sunday monday sunday Sunday. oh it was sunday because there wasn't open on weekends that's where Mm. i figured it out but yeah so the other the alternate pre-check so you only have the main pre-check and also pittsburgh's doing a lot of rejiggering because they're 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 in a massive reconstruction kind of situation right now so who knows what it's going to look like from time to time when we go in there so yeah. Um, on top between this and the Southwest is changing their entire business structure kind of scares the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> so I really don't want to fly during an adjustment period here. And I have to book <laughs> a couple of flights here in the next few months. And I was like, oh, okay, actually, I, actually my vacation is booked in November and it's on Southwest. So I'm like, well, they haven't changed it yet. So I, I, th- <laughs> I think it's 20, I think 2025 is when I'm going to start, start making the adjustments. But anyways, so they're pol- pit pals. Pit Pals. Pit Paws. I'm sorry. Pit, pit Paws. paws. P-I-T, hashtag P-I-T-P-A-W-S. Pit mm. Paws. So you can find them on social media and hopefully see them in person when you go to the airport. Be looking for them. <laughs> Definitely going to be looking for them. I love it. That was great. I, I, and I'm glad I'm glad you found that. I knew you were having a rough day there. So <laughs> we've got to make sure um, we've got to make sure I see my mother. The mama sorg is in the chat room as usual. And I got and I know we've been I've been threatening to get her the flyer down. Uh, to di- to Disney or something here in the near future, and we're gonna make sure it's scheduled when there's a therapy dog, so she'll be good at the flight. So, you know, <laughs> is there anything gonna make mom feel better? It's gonna be a, a yeah. dog at the airport. So, uh, my awesome thing, I you know, I I'm not like terribly privacy focused. Um, obviously, I'm kind of out there. I got a giant window with my name on it. Um, um, on Main Street, uh, so people can find me. But um. You know, uh, I, I, I've been kind of, we talked about here on the show a good bit about how um, it's very, like, I'm I'm sliding away from Google. Uh, Google search has been bothering me. Some of the features don't work. The, the Google Assistant, like, every time I hit voice, it never works for me um, for whatever reason. I'm just trying it on my Google TV today because uh, I hooked it up in the, in the workout room today because I figured it'd be easier that way. And just, like, I can't search for anything like I can on an Apple TV. So, like, it's really been, uh, it just there's too much crud when it goes to Google, uh, at least on the search side of things. So I finally made the dive, guys. I finally made the dive, and I started making my, um, I started making my um, search engine the Duck Duck Go, <laughs> for lack of a better alternative, honestly. And you know what? I've been actually kind of liking it. It's uh, the 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 biggest thing for me is the cleanliness. For it, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, is anybody else doing Duck Duck Go here? But my my wife has been for a while. <laughs> don't you remember the conversation where I say you use it for the spicy stuff, and you were like, "My mom's in the chat." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there is a little bit of there is a little bit of um <laughs> for the spicy stuff. Um, but yeah, but also there's a little bit of like all those filters aren't there. I'm not Mm-mm. getting I'm not getting the crud posts. Because I felt like the first page are all the BS posts of this is how you do the thing and here's all these ads. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that alone has been like worthwhile for my, again, I I talked a lot last week about the apps I was deleting from my phone for mental health uh, reasons um, that were, that were health apps that was deleting for mental health reasons last week uh, because it just reminded me everything I wasn't accomplishing and which does not help my, my mental state. Um, so like they go something like this, like, you know, you know, okay, for the show, yeah, I just did Awesome Cats podcast to make sure it comes up. And actually this leads into another story here, this first uh, uh, item here. But it's pretty straightforward. You're still getting YouTubes. It's still dropping me to YouTubes, but it's not taking over the entire top of the page with YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm looking for a how-to on how to do something like technologically on a video production or something. I can't sit there and watch a video. Give me a give me a, a, a how-to. I'm in a loud environment, you know, something like that. Or even just like I will often use it for um I, I, I swear every time that I, I go to a movie, 
I will search the movie after I walk out the movie to see what people are saying about the movie I just watched. Or who was that person that I couldn't look up during the show because I don't have Amazon X-ray, X-ray or something like that, right? Um, what's a recent movie? I don't know. Borderlands. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I saw it, and I really can't tell you anything about it. I don't know because I was really tired when I watched it or if it was that bad of a movie. <laughs> uh, I was just like, well, this feels like Borderlands. But like even this, like you're getting... You're still getting like a lot of the cards and stuff. It really just looks like Google from like five, six, seven years ago, which is my, I would say the best part, the best version of Google. So, um, but again, and before they started changing things that like they're kind of pushing more for the ads based and, and deprecating the search situation. So, um, but, but I kind of like that. And then there's, there's other things you can, you know, they kind of add on to this. Like if you go to the front page, like it does encourage you to, I uh, did it on the other one. Uh, it encourages you the first time to like install, like maybe, you know, they have their own privacy browser. They do have a, um, uh, um, a plugin for the browser. I'm on Firefox, which already has privacy stuff in it. Um, I'm just using his, the, the alternative. So like you can lean into that. Um, I did see um, when you're there are apps for um, the the iPhone again, kind of the privacy browser. I installed it in general to replace kind of the Google app, which again gave you that news feed, and I'd see something interested, but then it reloaded and I lost it. But then I click on and realize it was a bit, it was a, a, a BS uh, uh, article like Screen Rant or something like that. So it was like okay, none of this. <laughs> I'm not winning on any of this right now, um, but there's a you know a nice little like search box I can put in the corner. Uh, it takes up a lot less room, and and again back to the mindfulness idea. I'm pulling up the apps that I was um, uh, ignoring that I want to like reading books, reading comic books, things that I tell myself I want to get back to. Um, so it's really kind of like eased a lot of those. And I wasn't using the extra. I wasn't using incognito search mode on on google or anything like that you know for my spicy searches um <laughs> or anything so uh i, I recommend it. it if you're if you're like i got too much noise coming from the google kind of situation or i'm i'm starting to get weirded out when i search for something and start seeing ads over on instagram um which is something god i i forget what i felt like i again it's one of those i feel like i talked about it and then there was an ad Mm-hmm. kind of situation but obviously i searched for it at some point too um and there's hooks and everything you know there's a, if you if you're complaining about privacy and you use facebook that's kind of a you know you you're you're not 100 percent privacy or else you wouldn't have a facebook account you know or you'd be very you'd be using burner accounts or something like that so um but you know it's just it's just a nice cleanliness kind of thing it gets the job done it's a search engine i can't tell you that google's any better you know, I really can't. I mean, hell, I bing sometimes. The only thing, I will have one complaint. One of my favorite features was just typing speed test into the into an address bar and getting a speed test immediately. Oh. There is not a built-in speed test to this. Bing has one. Um, Google has their own. Um, but And I need it, like, on, on sets all the time when we're, when we're setting up for shows um, or, or just any kind of diagnostics, and they don't have that in there. That's my only minor complaint with it about a weekend to using this. So Chilla, I think you were about to say something. Does it have, and I'm looking cause they have a mobile mm-hmm. version too. Does it have, and I'm guessing cause of privacy, maybe it doesn't. Does it have the ability to sync your bookmarks? I think there's an account you can sign up for with it. Okay. Maybe. Um, and that, that should be able to do something like that. Actually, do not, I'm on their page and I don't see anything about it. Something like that. Uh, let's see. iOS browser. Let me look up that for you right here. Um, I, I see mean, the browser. I just don't see a way to like store and because that's the big thing for me is like I sync my bookmarks across all my devices. Mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. kind of like a a must have for me. But I'm also, I'm not interested in using the browser. I'm just using Safari. It's fine. You know, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm using Firefox. Otherwise, I'm using Safari. There's no reason to use any other kind of browser. Oh, it does have, okay, features if you are interested in. Uh, this may be helpful for you because uh, I was noticing, I mean, there's a lot of, again, there's a ton of features here that I'm not using. Of course, you have your search and everything. Um, website protection, email protection, smarter encryption. You can encrypt things as you're going through. I don't, a fire button? Clear your tabs and browsing data with one tap. Oh, that's handy. I wish Safari had that. Um, you have a VPN and you have an ID theft restoration uh, service. There are things you can pay for and upgrade. I think there's an in-app 
purchases. Yes, kind of thing. Uh, so it is going to offer you that because I was actually starting to use this. There are ads. Let's be clear. There are ads on this search. Um, but they're, again, it looks like Google of 10 years ago. It's got a little ad thing. It's the first two things. And then that's about it. The information it draws in looks like it's from Wikipedia for the most part. When I look up for movies or something like that. So like, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. It's pretty clear. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, and actually when I look up the movie, there's not actually any ads it looks like when I, when I uh, go to Borderlands here, but when I was searching like the, the podcast before, I think there were. Or no way. I, now I'm not even sure if I saw ads with this thing. I swear I did on something before. Not for Awesome Cast. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and here's like one. Here's one of the pages where it gives you the free extension or the uh, free browser for quote even more privacy. Mm -hmm. So if you really need to go into that, if you're really concerned about the privacy, if you're if you're tired of uh, all your information getting to Mark Zuckerberg and uh, and whoever runs Google these days, um, you know that. I mean, this is definitely this is definitely it. I mean. You know, I, I just, again, it's an annoyance factor for me. I'm just pulling away from it because I feel like they're making some decisions more for advertising than, you know, quote unquote security. And, um, you know, I just want to pull away from it. So anyways, I'm curious to see, uh, Chilla, what are you using these days? Are you still on the Google train or is this a personal question? Like who you're going to vote for? I don't know. Oh, no, he took his headset off. No, <laughs> he's no, checking no. his headset while I asked him a question. And he's back in, I think. No, nope. yes, there he is. He got the headset back on. Achilla, I was going to ask what your search engine is. I'm I'm typically on Google, I'm not yeah. going to lie. <clears throat> but I'll be honest with you, like, I find myself not usually visiting Google. I'm just searching in the URL bar, which is why their browser your whole duck duck go thing with having a browser mm -hmm. kind of interested me. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can, I'm just saying as defaults across the board, like, right. you know, in, 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 you know, as I go across the computers in, in the Firefox browser, I'm not touching anything else. Like it's, it's just this. And I have a, the, the, the app just for the, the browse button, I guess. But I, I'll tell you what I use Google for more than even search anymore is the news. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always on news.google.com. That's like my wake up in the morning and like old school people like pick the newspaper up off the front, the front stoop. Like my first news of the day is off news.google.com, mm -hmm. which I, I don't know. It's pretty good to me. I, get, I don't even know what I could tell you about my news from every day <laughs> <laughs> like when I wake up. Cause I, you know, you, I guess TikTok or Facebook, you know? Um, well, I'm news talk. Like I have a, mm, a decent routine, like, especially on the weekends, but even during the week anymore, like I get up, I check my email and then I jump on Google news and then I hit wordle and connections and then I start my day. <laughs> you got your routine. Um, yeah. yeah. Like an old man. <laughs> I, mine has turned into uh, put on some coffee uh, and sit down, uh, eat, eat, eat something late for breakfast, put on whatever show or wrestling show I need to catch up with, and do social media for the podcast for an hour. <laughs> it's, I, it's supposed to be I, I wake up and I rest for an hour, and it's turned into this thing over the last uh, month or so, and I'm like, oh, no, I, I don't think I'm doing mindfulness right. Uh, anyways... <laughs> Well, anyways, thank you everybody that does uh, support the show here. Again, we do have a Sorgatron Media Patreon feed that goes on during the show, and it also uh, gives you, like, you know, especially it took me a couple of days to get the Patreon up for some reason last week. Had some issues with uh, the other show thanks to a Windows update, uh, so that kind of delayed things. But you know, you didn't have to wait. There was a Sorgatron Media um, live feed where you could see everything and talk to we talk about, including stuff that doesn't get into the Patreon show. Uh, so you can uh, uh, dive into that or see what happens when we're playing graphics and things before the show after the show and you can see what we're kind of conversing about so um a kind of fun thing that we added here for you guys that do support the show and we do appreciate everybody does support us at patreon.com slash awesome cast and i will bring your attention also we have recommendations <laughs> I'm I'm finding new Patreon features. Um, no, I discovered there's recommendations. So our sister podcast with Sorgatron Media are now connected over there uh, that that have um, Patreon pages, of course. 
which means I need to talk to that fourth podcast about having a Patreon page because I think they'd do really good with it. Uh, so, so we're going to have a meeting this week. Uh, but thank you, everybody, that does support the show over there uh, at the Coffee Club level, Cynthia Klosky, and at the Family Show level, Michael Fedor, John De- Dickie DeGore, and Dave Ponder, spouse of Ruth Julia Fair at RuthJuliaFair.com, hanging out in the chat room with us tonight. Who said puppies so cute? Uh, and uh, what we were talking about before with Katie. So thank you everybody for supporting us at patreon.com slash awesome cast. And we are looking for interns and clippers as well. If you're interested in helping out the show, maybe some live producers. Um, we you know just help me so I don't have to do all the things myself and can actually interact with these chat rooms that are going on on so many platforms. Um, and let the people know what we're streaming and stuff like that. If you're interested, hit us up awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Dot com. Dot com. Let's get into a little bit more of the news. Uh oh, getting better at this. Yep, yep, it's the news. There you go. Let's get into it. Um. Oh no, it's all my stuff, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> oh no. All about you. It's <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I guess first, uh, uh Apple. Uh, hey, you know what? Apple finally brought podcasting to the web. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Thanks, Apple. You could have done this like 20 years ago, right? Yeah, so um, I guess you can uh, get in here and if you uh, uh, sign in with your stuff and then, I mean, it's kind of nice because now if you're like an Apple podcast person, now it's accessible over on, um, you know, over on a, a, you know, PC or whatever through a web browser. So that is kind of nice, I guess. But again, like, why didn't you do this a while? Does it keep track of like what you've listened to, where you're at in your current pod- podcast you're listening to? Like, does it keep track of all that stuff? I presume, I presume if you're signed in, it does. Right now, I'm searching for awesome. Ca- oh, I'm having a web problem or something right now. Uh oh, the web browser is a problem. <laughs> yeah, sign in and you can keep up with all your shows. Okay. It'll have all that stuff going on. Um, and uh, it keeps breaking when I'm searching. It I sees me there. Okay, here we go. It. No, no, not that one. This one. And yeah, so that's what it looks like there if you're uh, interested. In that, I mean, it looks like the podcast app. So I don't know. I don't trust any podcast to keep where I'm at anymore. Uh, YouTube music has been really kind of um, dismaying me lately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just YouTube, basically, right? So, um, and also on that, now that podcasts on YouTube are basically just YouTube and you do a playlist and call it a podcast, I, I'm going to try to um, actually do an edited version of the video version because that becomes the podcast somehow. I think that's the only way you're in YouTube music. And I, as a YouTube music uh, uh, user, it popped up, hey, there's a new episode this morning. It popped up, there was a new episode. And it was the live feed with the music that plays for five minutes. I'm like, okay, we got to fix this up a little bit. <laughs> so... Um, so we'll be, we'll be working on that. So are you guys you still using like Apple podcasts or anything? Like I'm, again, I, I mostly use, I, I, I'm using YouTube music because most of my stuff has a YouTube side. Um, except for like one lonely podcast <laughs> that's still on Apple podcasts. I mean, where are you guys I, with it? I use the podcast app only cause like CarPlay and it's just everywhere. Yeah. It's on all my devices all the time. Like, yeah. What about you? I, don't, have, do you I guess when you're in the car, if you're using Google, does that come up on CarPlay? Uh, YouTube Music's on CarPlay, or okay. or if I'm just playing a YouTube video, the audio will come up too. So, Katie, what, okay. are, you, what are you using? Uh, I'm using Apple Podcasts. This makes me so happy because I don't know if you've ever tried to embed an episode of a podcast or like tag somebody's podcast, mm-hmm. and like just trying to find the freaking link mm-hmm. to put. <laughs> <laughs> like this is like infinitely easier just for that because it's like I I can't like okay hold on if I click on this it just starts playing the podcast when yeah, you're in yeah. the other, but now I'm like ooh there's a link <laughs> I was gonna say there was an embeddable that was going that was happening for a while mm-hmm. right so but that but if you clicked on it you couldn't go subscribe if you weren't on mm-hmm. an Apple device so yeah no uh, it, gee Apple becoming more open how about that you know mm-hmm. so and that's the thing it's like it's like the last thing because I feel like everything else was on iCloud.com that they've been doing. So, like, even Apple Music has been cross-platform for the most part, I thought. So, I don't know. It's 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 peculiar. So, um, Overcast also works on the CarPlay. I, anything audio is going to work on CarPlay audio-wise. I guess it's whether it has an app for that. And I think any good audio but, yeah, but like, Does it have an app and does it give you, like, because I'm not going to lie. Like, there's certain 
music videos that I listen to on YouTube, mm -hmm. but I just start them on my phone and let them play through the. Do you have YouTube? Pre do you have YouTube you don't, Premium? <clears throat> no, that's that's but, a difference. So I, I have background play in YouTube, so I just. But I can do that too. Mm -hmm. But I don't have. Well, I guess here's the question: Even with YouTube Premium, if you're just listening to the audio, mm -hmm. does do you get buttons to like fast forward, rewind, all the normal? Um, there is a generic player in CarPlay. So if you're playing something that doesn't have a specific app, it'll go into that player. Is my okay. is my experience? Okay, that doesn't happen for me in YouTube. So okay, interesting because I I think it mostly happens for me, but maybe because I have YouTube Music, I don't know. I, I, maybe I, it's, I don't know. It's not, I've I've I I'll play other things that don't have. I'll listen to um. There's some uh political shows, pol political slash comedy shows that, that are on like Max, and I will just listen to it because there's no reason to see people sitting in a panel, right? Um, mm -hmm. so if I'm like on a long car trip, I'll bring it up. And as long as I hit play, it has background play and it'll just show up in the corner with like a crappy thumbnail, you know, on the, on the home screen, you know, where you can see the map and the music and the, you know, whatever else is coming up. Right. Um, so I don't know. That's not a problem I've seen, but I don't really need other controls like the fast forward or anything like that. I guess podcast, yeah, I'm more just podcast interested in you'd skip. want to. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want to be able to skip or mm -hmm. skip 30 seconds. Like, yep. I'm, I'm sorry. But also, like... But, but like, I skipped past the commercials. Missy did a <laughs> tremendous thing where she got a new um, a new uh, MagSafe... Or Mag... Is it MagSafe? Yeah, MagSafe um, charger. And positioned it right by the wheel. So now it's, like, a second screen to CarPlay. <laughs> so all my controls are right there anyways. Um, but that's my configuration. Um, it's just like, oh, okay, wait. So why did we get the CarPlay? Because now this is right here. And not looking down anymore... So, you know, but then it just, yeah, like, I don't know though. I try, like we had that in the one car for the longest time mm -hmm. and like the maps just doesn't, doesn't add up. No, 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 no. It, what, what, what you mean? What, when you're just using the phone like that? Yeah. I was just yeah, using yeah, yeah. the phone. Oh yeah. When that. you're multitasking, but if you already have CarPlay, so all the important stuff's up on CarPlay and now like, you know, ways will pop up all the directions. So now I have a list of the turns on top of the actual map happening. Mm -hmm. So th that's very handy when you're in the middle of a city for that last mile, you know, of your trip. <laughs> so because that's where it gets, okay, what's the next one I need to look out for? Because it's in 50 feet, you know, like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Like going to Cleveland a few weeks ago um, for SummerSlam, like it was like, okay, what's the next? Okay, okay, I need this, then this, you know, and you'll see it says it's like, you know, you know, so many, you know, point mile, point two five or something like that. And you're like, okay, I need to be aware for this, right? So that's definitely very, very helpful for city driving. Um, you can play Diablo, the original Diablo, in your browser. Somebody, this is a GitHub. You can go into Shareware. It'll download it. Presumably, you can take the, I don't know, we call them wads on Doom. And then there it is playing in browser. This is in my on my Mac. Uh, and let's see. There you go. And everything seems to work. I already signed up a little bit here. And oh, that's right. It's a it's a click to move. <laughs> I don't think I've gotten to any monsters yet. I may not even have a sword. I don't even know. I forget how this game starts. It's does, does multiplayer work? I don't know. Cause that was the big thing in the original Do Diablo, right? You could like people were like trading their stuff mm -hmm. like on eBay and whatnot. Handy. Handy. Goodbye. Goodbye, person I'm talking Bye. to. So, uh, not real fancy. <laughs> I'm in the town. I'm in the town where I'm trying to figure everything out and install tutorial and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, it's playing in the browser. I mean, that's a nice, like, 1990 game um, that they have loaded in there. But uh, plenty of power. I need I need more of this. I know uh, archive.org does a lot of this with old games. Um, you know, and it's the shareware, so you don't have to worry about it, it being kind of sketchy or anything like that. So, um, go check that out. It's... Um, I don't know the address. We'll have the address in the notes because <laughs> it's like a GitHub crazy thing. Uh, GitHub Diablo web. If you want to look it up and uh, the article we got it from is from over at Kotaku. So um, Brian Crawford sent in a few articles here, including, did you see that they found water on Mars? 
This is the big one. It's underground, right? It's underground. I think it's, is it the rivers that they were talking about here? I didn't get to dive really into this. Um, but, uh, yeah, it says that, uh, we, we found water, uh, this, 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 this is from a mission, uh, for insight that ended in December of 2022. And, um, they recorded more too. They also recorded more than 1,319 quakes on Mars as well. Uh, so it's really active as far as that goes. Um, but they revealed reservoirs of water at the depths of about six to 12 miles in the Martian crust. So that is a big thing. Um, I mean, that, that, that's one of the big things they're looking for because for a lot of the processes they want to do when we, you know, one day land there um, and move Elon up there, um, you know, a lot of those processes are going to require water. And, you know, if we know what's there, we can, although 12 miles, <laughs> <laughs> getting to it's going to be interesting <laughs> probably. So, um, but I'm sure we'll have some sort of, method like that it's gonna be like armageddon they were just drillers right i recently watched armageddon like a part of armageddon again for for i don't know what reason i was like i wonder if the science holds up on this one. <laughs> oh, it's it's so funny because i follow someone on tiktok and he just kind of goes back and watches these movies and these shows like seventh heaven i didn't realize how terrible that show was oh no and like but like he went back and he's like armageddon's a horrible movie and they're like he talks through it and i was like oh my gosh this is terrible <laughs> like the premise is just like was, like, like only two people know what's going like the only the u.s knows about this guy <laughs> really but there asked? was a whole there was a whole slew of those in the late 90s oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 whole, the whole the whole death the the, the, the death asteroid kind yes. of thing <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah deep impact i think was another one yes um no i love it just like um you know they're like oh you gotta train these guys to drill and they're like no i gotta bring driller guys up to this this thing it was like <laughs> Nobody freaking lets you do this. <laughs> so, um, and also, it keeps reminding me of um, what is it? I think it's called This Is No, it's not This Is the End. That's the Seth Rogen one about the end of the world. Um, Don't Look Up that Netflix did a few years ago, right? That was a good one. Yeah, that was that was depressing as hell, but, it's, but it know, was kind of realistic. Yeah, it was, it was like that, that's way like, more likely than send a bunch of drillers. I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, that we'll just ignore it until it just happens anyways. And then, uh, yeah, it, it, you're going to watch this movie, you know, even a couple years removed here and you're going to be like, Oh no, this is completely how we'd react to this. Oh no. Yeah. We'd be screwed because this would completely happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's even, even that post credit scene, I think would go down too. <laughs> so, um, but that you don't look up on uh don't look up on on Netflix for that one. Um god, that was um Leonardo DiCaprio's in that one, right? And I think Emma was he in Don't Look Up? What's Yeah, I think that's Leo in that one. Research department. <laughs> Go to DuckDuckGo. <laughs> I am. It's IMDb. my default. And yeah, uh it's uh from 2021. Great time to do that. <laughs> And, uh, oh, no, it was Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you know you want to. Oh, IMDb does come up in these as well. And there's an image search, too. That's great. I mean, it basically looks like Google. How do they not get so- sued for this? I guess you can really. Wait, there's a chat button on here. Ooh. What is this? Hello, dual- DuckDuckGo AI chat. What? <laughs> what? Anyways. Where are we at with uh, things right now? So, um, I'm waiting for this one article with the 444 consoles. Ooh, <laughs> Katie, you've seen some of my setups. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you see the yeah somebody somebody set up. Um, where oh where's that article at? In Saudi Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. apparently, um, he earned the world record for hooking up 444 game consoles. Um, I've been to trying one TV. to one TV. Listen, oh, look at that. That is the ultimate game room right there. There's, 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 there's just so many Genesis Genesis. Genesis. Um, man, that's a, that's a killer collection. The, the amount of switchers he has to have. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Look at all that. Is it just like one big one or. <laughs> well, you would think it would have to be multiple because you can't get like a, mm-hmm. some of the, older generation devices and, and and look at this crazy it, monitor it, it's got like a super widescreen situation over here and uh pulls it up and and that this is this is crazy oh wait wait maybe that's the that's just the database of mm-hmm. games that he has man 
this is fantastic. Look at all the controllers. Um, this is this is like my dream setup over here. Is like I just want to play all the things in one place. So, um, and he's got like like every old school. He's got old computers. Like it looks like like the you know Commodore GT something. I don't even know what that is that they're pulling. Well, Atari out. Atari had the Atari XT, mm -hmm. which was like the Commodore sixty four, but then it had a cartridge slot for Atari games. That's incredible. I had one of those as a kid. More than uh, uh, says he makes use of more than twelve HDMI switchers <laughs> to keep his collection connected. Uh, over thirty RCA uh, switchers for pre HD consoles, and uh, do 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 do. Although some of the consoles uh, use converters for HD connections, I know I was looking at some of those for a Wii lately. Uh, oh, by the way, my Wii's in the back. Ooh, yes, the Wii's back. The Wii's in the back. It's hooked up here in the studio. I have some ideas for it. Um, I have ideas for my Wii. Uh, so uh, no, this this is this is tremendous. Um, like I said, I I have like I don't know, like I said, like six, seven, eight usually at a time that I've been trying to hook up to a TV, and that's been like it, I feel like I have it and it's like good for six months, and then I just like it falls apart for one reason or another. So, um, but the um, goals, I guess. And we'll give this one shout out from uh, Brian Crawford. He picked up a new smartwatch, it seems. It's the Amazfit GTR 3 smartwatch um, for Android Android and iPhone, it's saying. So it's only about a $99 phone. Retails for one, one, about 120 it looks like, on Amazon. And we'll put the link in the notes, of course. Uh, and his, this is his review of it real quick here. I bought the smartwatch and, uh, it had an incredible battery life, uh, on sale for $80 when he picked it up. Works for both Android and Apple. Uh, some apps only work for the Android version and he uses Alexa for the voice assistant. Interesting. That, I haven't heard of that before. Um, so there you go. I, 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 I'm weary of alternate. Of course he's, he's very Android, so he's, probably looking for that alternative because I is Android wear still an ongoing thing, Chilla? Are you is it is it Samsung? Yeah, where where OS it, still exists. Okay, but is it like viable or people developing for it? I mean Apple keeps having apps drop off. Yeah, I think it's still it's still viable and Samsung has their own one as well. I don't know. I like I haven't I haven't activated a Android watch in forever. I actually have one sitting up. I'm looking at it right now, but I haven't. I don't <laughs> I even love you looking, I need... You're looking up in the sky at this Android watch. <laughs> it's like, hello, 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 hello yeah. Android watch. Hello, looking over me. Hello, so there it is. From above. Oh, there you go. You but it's it. like one of the. It's one of the OG. It's the Motorola. Mm. It's one of the first. Ooh, when the when the when the the design of the day was round. Yeah, and it doesn't. I don't even. It doesn't even have a. a heart sensor or anything in it it's just like og wear i bet you it would charge it was interesting because it was an induction charge device so listen chill here's up. the charger you're gonna you're gonna charge up you're gonna charge up your um your android watch i'll charge up one of my pebbles and uh we'll get going here so i was going to show you my soundboard but apparently i forgot to plug in the power to my ipad <laughs> So I saw you were, I saw it soundboard pro. Mm -hmm. Are you paying for it? I am not paying for it. Cause all I need to do is insert about a couple of things in here. And then we're so that's how I use it. I love it. And I have this nice iPad, uh, uh, pro that still has a headphone jack. So I was like, Oh, that's the way we do this. Um, so now I think there's going to be a dedicated soundboard and the battery just died. So uh, I, I'm just so happy we can get I can finally make use of um, uh, Kid Bennell's uh, sounders with him and being him being in the studio. I know he's been been busy on Tuesday nights, um, but uh, yeah. So uh, Soundboard Pro. Uh, I, so if you want simple soundboard like this, like the some of the some of the uh, updates that it has uh, when you pay for it are going to be like multiple sound soundboards. You know, so if I wanted a separate soundboard for like Mayhem Show or something like that. Uh, for the time being, like I don't 
really need it because I'm just doing stuff for this show. I gotta say, I'm generally anti soundboard because I'm I'm afraid it gets like kind of overused when people get used to it. I think I disable that on a, that ability on a, a, a Zoom to let people do that on their end. <laughs> so, uh, but it's kind of nice because I was able to color code like what are our names versus like you know things they were saying like you know thing of the week, uh, the news, things things of that nature. Um, it's definitely got far more um, features that I need. If you were just using this and you weren't like an editor, like you can trim tracks, you can bulk import, uh, things like that. That's actually in the free version. The pro stuff has track automations, unlimited boards, you know. So again, if you're like growing up, um, you are, and you're limited to 24 tracks for the free version. So that's been kind of nice. Now the pricing options, um, they are... Six, pricey. Six ninety nine a week to sixty dollars a year to one sixty forever. That's that's tough. <laughs> that is, that, that, that's a little. I mean, I guess if you're really dedicated and need a soundboard, uh, the ongoing that that kind of I uh, this is where subscription park pricing gets a little wonky for me. If you're telling me that I was going to drop like I don't know sixty dollars a year, I guess isn't terrible, but it just se- it doesn't seem like the kind of app that deserves a subscription like this. Like CapCut deserves a subscription because it's always updating, right? Mm-hmm. Am I, is this weird, you know, that one app is and one isn't? But I don't know, it's, it's a little bit hard to digest. Maybe I just, maybe I'm not respectful enough to the soundboard operation. Well, but I look at that and like, I would rather go out and get Rogue Amoebas. And I like it because mm-hmm. it's on my phone <laughs> and I only needed like a couple different tracks. But I would go out and get Rogue Amoebas, what is it, Farago, Farago, whatever it is and that's 50 bucks mm-hmm. for life and then <clears throat> well it's 50 bucks for the current version and then they always have special um upgrades so when they come out with a new version like it's usually 25 bucks or half price and they have podcast bundles and it's the, i like their i like their software a lot it's the, um it's the farago yeah hmm so what do you get with the free download? Is, this, is that just a trial? That's just a, a tr- time-based trial. Mm. And this is, I, I need, uh, 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 Rogue Amoeba is, is a, a name that I've, I've heard a long time in podcasting too. Uh, audio Hijack's a big one for kind of audio routing. Um, they have Loopback a bunch of, is really good. Loopback is another one that a lot of people use when they're doing podcasting and have for as long as I can remember. Um, so it's, it is, uh, it's a low end. I feel like it's, it is, it's a smaller company, you know, if, if, you know, just the number of people or something, right? Like I felt like it was, it was kind of just developers like on their own kind of thing. Like, like a lot of the Mac apps we like to grab. Um, so, you know, it's sound control, it's, it's, uh, uh, audio editing, you know, it's, it's, you know, if you're a newer podcaster, a lot of these tools are going to be very helpful for a lot of people on the budget. Uh, for things like that, even their Fission app, how much is that going for? Because that's their audio editor. It's thirty five dollars for a key for a license for that, and you can go eighty dollars for that with audio, audio hijack. That's tremendous. <laughs> I didn't know that those are those cheap. I would have I would have suggested it to more people starting podcasts, honestly. So. Yeah, and like I like because usually, I want to say around March time frame, I think it is. They always do a large discount on the bundle sales. Mm-hmm. So I think I got like all their products for like, like Black Friday, 75 bucks or something. It was super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye out for those. Join the mailing list. And I'm sure those will pop up if you're keeping an eye out for that. But definitely, definitely highly recommended by, by um, big podcasts that I've listened to for years. I've, I've talked, always talked about it. So definitely worthwhile. So awesome. Um, oh, I had a tip <laughs> that came to mind here. With something we were talking about here. Nope, nope, nope. It's not going to come to mind, is it? Rogue Amoeba. Rogue Amoeba. It's my band name. Your band name's Rogue Amoeba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Um. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna escape me. Anything else you guys want? Anything else from from the weekend news? I it was mostly security. I think I, apparently all of our social security numbers are out there. Mm-hmm. So not good news. <laughs> Did you use the free lookup to see if yours is out there? I'm afraid to. I just presume it is, honestly, at this point. Um, I, I'm just going to um, finally go through the last pass security thing, at least, to make sure my password is. I, I, need, I need to like, like get a block of time and just sit down and 
go through that. But anything I use on a regular basis that has anything important, I believe I've already uh, changed my password um, relatively recently. So, um, Chilla, what's the link? <laughs> Jump in the dock. Yeah, what is it? Oh, what's the link? Um, let me see. <laughs> something, <laughs> something I pen test. I know that's it. <laughs> it right? is something pen test. And this is one of those um, data. Oh, what do they call them? The it data. was a data breach. It was a data breach with one of those uh, data collectors. So it's nothing that you signed up for. It's one of those, um, you know, one of those companies that just they're just you know collecting and selling data across the board. It's not a. It's not even a. Um, a uh, it's not a um, credit report company or anything like that. Uh, one one thing there was a good discussion on Twitter this week about credit freezing. If you don't intend to use your credit, like it is, don't let them talk you into paying for something. It is they they passed a law a couple years ago. It is free to freeze your credit if you're concerned about that. Um, and they actually recommend go freeze your account credit. Like like if you're if you have no reason to be signing up for anything, go freeze your credit. Um, so there's too many leaks right now. There's too much that can go wrong. Um, there's too many times. I know we're getting, we, as it is, we get mail of people who have tried to sign up stuff with this address. So like, that's already a problem. And then, you know, if your credit's out there, like somebody could, could be uh, attempting to use your information to, to sign up for God knows what. And then that goes to your credit report. Plus the credit report's ha wrong half the time and it's whatever it is. Um, there you go. Uh, and that looks like the one that they're, that I was hearing about, mpd.pentester.com. So uh, we're going to look at this, and uh, I think on the Patreon, I'm going to look up to see my information's out there. Ooh, yeah, that's what the, that's. We'll both look up our stuff. <laughs> that, and Ooh. we can also explore because uh, my business partner um, um, decided that uh, one of our Twitter accounts was going paid today, and um, I have not. So if you're curious, what's on the other end of a paid Twitter account? I think we're going to explore, if we have a little bit of time, we're going to explore it a little bit here. Uh, so that's what you have to look forward to. Is my data out there <laughs> <laughs> collectively? And uh, npd.pentester.com uh, if you guys want to check it out too. And I recommend doing it. Um, uh, the one thing I was hearing was a lot of people, If you, you I think it searches based on your, maybe there's another one. Uh, uh, is it, have I been pwned? Is that the other one, Chilla? Um, yeah, that's for, that's to see if your passwords have been breached. This was for social security number. Yeah, because of the other one, like the the pwned one, is usually has your email address and password. And if you have something like again, I'm still yes, I'm the one still using LastPass. Um, they they are you know sometimes some of these places call it dark web checks. Um, they're looking at these databases that are out there and 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 um, kind of putting them up against like what they have encrypted in your in your account and say, hey, some of this stuff is out here. So, so it is, if you're using a passwords manager, make sure it's something that does something like that and does give you those updates. So if it comes up, it says, Hey, this, uh, this, this information for your bank account was found, you know, you should change stuff for right now, you know, like things like that. So, um, that's the idea there. So now that we suitably scared everybody, Chilla, thank you for joining us again. I'm glad we got your headset figured out. <laughs> One of the interesting things that I've heard and I've seen, I've heard a lot more and more people doing it. Even if you're if you don't want to pay for like the last pass or something, they've kind of created their own personal algorithm that's based on the site that they're logging into. Um, so like if you're logging into Apple.com, like part of the password has the URL in it. So that way it's easy to kind of remember your password, but it's unique for every darn website. Um, something something to think about. Yeah, I definitely use that. Um, I mean, I, I use the the create a new one. Yeah, yeah. The Apple stuff's really good. I love I love the Apple stuff. Gives you like a whole pa whole different email address. Mm -hmm. So I heard somebody said they were using that to get free trials week to week <laughs> or month to month or something. I just it was a backstage locker room conversation. I don't know what service they were talking about. I'm just like, are they talking about like hacking with the Apple like? Like security feature, <laughs> yeah, this, this, this an interesting thing. use for it. It, it, it. it actually it makes sense. So, um, not that we are advocating for that. Um, so, but uh, support the support the smaller companies. You know, for that, that, that like that, Apple, like the Lindo's, small companies. They're using Apple's tool, but yeah. Uh, Chilla, thank you so much. At Chilla on most of the social medias, Chilla five seven nine on others. If you don't find the Chilla that looks like this, hmm. thank you. And of course, uh, Katie in studio. Good to have you. <laughs> what? 
Rogue Amoebas. Rogue Amoebas. You learned about Rogue Amoebas Rogue today. Amoebas. Rogue Amoebas. I saw you pop up when you heard that <laughs> name. And I'm just like, what? And I'm like, oh, that is a weird name. I've just heard it forever. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> now you got to look up the Rogue Amoebas. Right? That is, that's like the part of their tagline, isn't it? What? Hold on. Let me, let me go back out to their site. Strange name, great software. <laughs> yeah. Strange name, great Strange software. Strange name, great software. I like it. This has been your awesome cast. I'm at Sorgatron. All in all the Twitters. Oh, soundboard's dead. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see you guys next week. Next week is episode 700. Will we do anything special for it? I don't know. Uh, but stay tuned for the Patreon if you're with us on there. Or sign up at patreon.com slash awesomecast to get some more discussion. Uh, and we'll have some more going on here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, this has been, you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.